Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at this thing. This is the realistic triple play 8-track changer. Like for... triple play in baseball. Yes, exactly. What do you think of this thing? Uh, it's a little weird. Most 8-tracks, as you know, just go between four programs in succession. They, there's no rewind, it's just program one, two, three, four. This one actually allows you to load three separate cartridges and then when you click through the programs on whatever cartridge you're on. Have you figured it out yet? Figured what out? Oh yeah, yes. There's a hidden message in our 8-tracks. We have ACB Memphis, like our channel. But anyway, as you click through the things and get to the end of one tape, it automatically kicks out that tape and goes to the next tape. And if you let this thing run, it would just run forever. What do you think about that? That's kind of cool. They're also super rare. And this, of course, is our second entry in Radio Shack products for 8-tracks with a baseball theme. We previously showed you the double header, which was this cleaning cartridge, and now, of course, we've got the triple play this was introduced in the 1974 catalog and took up the whole back cover. It was the new fun machine for parties and listening. Interesting also, one of their selling points is the fact that you can get four hours of non-repeatable music. I wonder if they played Staying Alive. They probably did play Staying Alive. Yeah, it was offered in 1974 and 1975, and I believe it was the only changer that Radio Shack ever offered. Another interesting thing about the 1974 catalog is this note in the corner which references President Nixon's freezing of consumer prices to combat inflation. Hard to see that happening today. Then its final appearance in the 1975 catalog it was given the additional name of TR888 in addition to the triple play. At the $99 price point, you could get a quad system or a system of speakers or this changer. And it's kind of an uncommon rare design. You don't see that many 8-track players that are changers, and among those you don't see that many with three tapes. After doing some research for this video, I am almost certain that this model is the exact same model internally as the MGA TD83. The only difference being the location of the program button. Imagine if there's like an 8-track that um, had volume, bass, and v two VU, but you would put the 8-track on the top of the deck. Uh, there probably is one of those out there, actually. I think there's some, some console models, but why I get this, what makes this interesting? Let's talk about three things that make this eight track sort of interesting one is the fact that the eight tracks are hidden behind a door most eight tracks just hang out the front or whatever and that's kind of ugly so it's kind of cool this is sort of hidden away kind of like that uh next interesting thing is the fact that is it really a changer when you think about a changer like this tape changer or a record changer like in our other video yeah or this even this other eight track changer you think about bringing the media up to a common playback head but this is not that way this actually has three playback heads and that are independent. It's more like a dual cassette deck. Now, the only other thing like this I found was the RCA 8-track changer, but it actually requires them to put it stuff into a caddy. Interesting See, feature. Look, no, yeah. you just shove that one in, but you calmly just put it in and doesn't shove it, and then you click play, and then it just yeah. slowly gets in it. The other cool thing about this is look how easy it is to load and unload. Every other 8-track I've ever used is just a pain. This thing... Uh, uh, just actually just pulls the tape in. As you can see, it's a pretty simple mechanism. It's Maybe just, the company just wanted not eight, like the machines not to break, so they built this. Yeah, it's just a simple thing that just cycles through uh, each different position and uh, pulls the 8-track in, and it's uh, very easy to load and unload load because there's no tension on the tape. This little thing on the top is the thing that switches tracks, and it just kind of advances to the next track, and when it's done, it advances to the next tape. It's very simple. Now let's talk about what we had to do uh, to repair this. Uh, just a brief disclaimer, when we get to this repair section, if there's any gaps or whatever in the audio, it's because uh, YouTube probably identified a copyright thing and I muted it. Uh, we had to use some pre-recorded tapes to align this. So don't anyway... Don't, when, you, YouTube, don't blame it on us. Yeah, so when we first started it, here's what happened. Now flip the switch in the middle over one. problems press the button again uh oh and so what we found well nice that stuff. somebody replaced the belt with a rubber band a rubber band yeah Why is it good weird? lesson folks you cannot replace a belt with a rubber band if that happened you're bad news but that wasn't the problem yeah we replaced the rubber band with a real belt and what we get stay there we still have some lubrication issues all right. So what we found is, you know, we thought it was maybe like just needed lubrication, but the flywheel turned. The motor just had no pull. It like uh, just kept on stopping. Yeah. Every time 
every so often the motor would work. Anyway, that motor is like almost 46 years old and it's, it's under a lot of stress. So something's probably burned out. First thing I wanted to do though, is make sure that it was the motor that was the problem and not the circuit. So I took the motor out and just wired it up to an independent power supply. And sure enough, we got the same problem. The motor had no actual... So what did we do? Well, we had to take apart the motor next. So we just took the motor apart and gave it a real good cleaning. You know, just made sure and clean everything off, put a little bit of grease on there, put it all back together. And once I got it all back together and the motor was actually turning consistently, here's what happened. It's too slow. So how do we handle a too slow motor? We make it faster. Well, normally on most tape decks, there is a speed adjustment. So I looked under this board, which the motor gets its power from to see if there was some sort of potentiometer or something. Nope. Yeah, unfortunately, no such luck. A-track players are different from tapes because they have a speed, tapes have a speed adjustment and A-tracks don't. Higher end A-tracks actually do. but So we did find some reference to some fuses that don't exist, which is kind of interesting. There's no uh, speed adjustment on here. No fuses? Yeah, that either. As it turns out, this motor has an internal speed governor. So in order to take the motor apart, you got to take off the pulley. Ah! Yeah, this is a fun process. You take off the little metal sheet there. You take off these screws. Eventually you get down to it. Of course, I accidentally broke the blue wire off, so I had to re-solder that. What you're looking for is these uh, little tiny, tiny screws. So these tiny little screws out here, you turn. And the way that this works, just reading online, it's a mechanical governor of some sort. So when the force of the thing spinning turns and it gets too fast, it separates the contacts. And then when the motor slows down, the contacts go back together and cause the circuit to re-engage. So that not way... Not like the contacts that you put in your eye. Not those kind of contacts. These are like uh, electrical contacts. The whole idea was, let's turn it to the right to make it, make it a little bit faster. Here's what happened. Now it's too fast. Un yeah. Unfortunately, a little bit of a turn on those screws. It's made, like a jet going. And eventually, we, we had to just go back and forth. We, we tried to sync it up to a pre-recorded tape, which was a painful process. And we had to assemble the motor about four times. We finally got it close. <laughs> Who comes up with a, with a motor, with a speed adjustment process that requires you to take apart the motor? That's crazy. The, next, the last problem was this head. Look at the middle head. Doesn't it look a little different than the other two? Yeah, somebody could have replaced it. Yeah, I was trying to clean that off. If anybody knows of a way to clean that gunk off, I'm assuming a tape got left in there and it was melted. Um, it just sounds a little bit more muffled because it's hard to clean, which brings to mind the question, how do you align these things? There's no easy way to get to the screws either. But anyway. It's like a parking garage in there. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of slots. Anyway, so let's do some audio tests. First of all, I'm going to get this old Sears tape. We're going to record some stuff Where on it. Where did you get that? Uh, eBay, it came with, I got like 10 tapes for a dollar each. We're going to record some stuff. And we'll also, if you remember our last 8-track video, we had that weird tape. We're going to try that one. The, you know, may, hopefully it won't get flagged for copyright. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. All right. See you next time for another video just watching Spider-Man.